All right. Hey, folks, I want to share with you how I built this dial right here. It's one I'm particularly proud of. <laughs> I tried a lot of new uh, techniques and, and added quite a few different um, types of prop and materials uh, and things to build with. I tried to up my uh, tag lettering game a little bit and just really add a, a whole bunch of new and exciting uh, processes to building uh, a dial like this. And these are some of the images that I've taken with this dial. Look at that Superman. I think that's a DC uh, deceased series, the zombie Superman. Pretty cool. But anyway, let's take a look at how I built this. And I'm not going to share with you really how I did the brick line and, and all that. Uh, you guys have seen a ton of videos on how to build bricks and all those things and how to line them out with the grids and stuff. Uh, I'm just going to walk you through how I built this dial uh, and some of the processes that I did that are new uh, that I tried out for the first time in building this dial, like hairspray chipping and uh, adding, uh, you know, 3d printing and modeling light fixtures to put lights in them and i'm going to try to break this up in probably a two video uh series because there was a lot to this uh dial and overall the measurements of it were the walls were 14 inches high and uh the base was uh, 12 by 11 and you'll see i'm going to stand the foam up here once i find the centers i'm, I'm going to stand the foam up here and i'm going to decide to go with uh, magnets are ultimately going to be used to hold these dial panels to the floor but as most people do they put the wall on top of the floor I'm going to do the opposite and you can see here the walls go uh, flush with the bottom of the floor there and this is going to give me a little more stability in the end when I use these bar magnets to make sure you know I can uh, attach and detach these panels to the dio because i'm gonna have 3d printed props on here some ladders and different things like that it's going to add weight to the wall and i need as much uh, stability as i can get and while these wall panels overlap uh, in the corner that offers a little bit more stability too here's something interesting to note i wanted to start out with this being a dio for a neca figure however i quickly soon uh, in the back of my mind realized that wait a minute I want to have a door in this dial and the built plate on my 3d printer is only eight inches so with that being said I realized that I could not print the door that I wanted uh, edge to edge flush on the build plate because this Jason figures eight inches and I need to be at least eight and a half eight and 0.75 inches to get a realistic looking door for him to fit through so we switched it up and we're going to build this for a mezco figure <laughs> which is fine i love mezco and i've got a mezco jason but um so it's just something that i thought of in the back of my mind while i was initially laying out the uh, measurements of this and you can see on that popeye that i put a piece of paper up there to kind of give me an idea of if the door size that I had measured out in my uh, in my mind was going to work as kind of a little template. So I modeled and printed this door out here and I wanted it to be working. So you can see that I put the little hole in the top and the bottom and I modeled that into the design when I printed it. Got a cool little uh, ornamental iron style window here. Uh, I cut the door hole out already and I'm going to show you how I do that when we get to the window. There's kind of a, a trick to it that works more or less better depending on how much uh, time or how, how uh, well I take my time doing it. But uh, you may know a better way, but I'm going to share with you the way that I do it. And uh, it, it works pretty well. And it's probably the way most people do it anyway. Uh, we, this window frame here, here, you can see it's got the inset. These measure, uh, this is a three by five window, I believe. And I've got some pretty standard measurement sizes that I, that I go with when I do these. I do uh, uh, three by fives. I do um, four by four and you know I, I have a couple different sizes that I just go with I think I've got a two by six or something uh, but anyway um, it's really nice being able to 3d print and model these types of 
supporting props. In the end, I'm going to base coat these with a Rust-Oleum Rust colored primer. And uh, that's going to give me my base coat on all these uh, prints that I do. But let's talk about real quick how I'm going to cut the hole for the window. I'll put it on the dial where I want it. I'll trace it with a marker or pencil or whatever you want to do. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut to the inside of that mark line. And that's going to give me a really tight fitting hole for the window to fit in. And I'm using a box cutter blade here for my cuts to begin with because it's just more rigid. Uh, don't go too deep with it because then the base of the box cutter will drag against the foam. So once I've got a depth that, that is good with the box cutter, I'll go back through and hit it with the X-Acto knife. But we flip it over and in each corner of the uh, template that I marked out, I'll push a really thin, super sharp, uh, pokey thing through there <laughs> and then I'll mark the four corners on the back side and what you got to be careful for when you do this is that if you don't put the super part super sharp pokey thing through straight then you can get your corners off a little bit but anyway go ahead and line those corners up with a ruler and make your four corners connect remember those old games uh where connect the dots and and you would connect the dots in a numbered order and you would end up with a completed image that's probably before a lot of people's time who are going to watch this video but it just shows my age <laughs> connect the dots i think is what it was called and uh yeah that's kind of what you're doing on the back here you're just connecting the four dots and making a square and cutting again hopefully those lines are all lining up and you've got a nice tight hole here and i do and as a matter of fact it's almost too tight <laughs> so we're going to get in here with the block sander and just lightly widen those holes just a little bit uh, and it would have helped too if I cleaned the 3d print just a little bit more but hey you know what uh, I'm trying to make things happen here so <laughs> anyway um, once we've got a good looking hole it's clean and it's tight and that thing f fits in there I believe we're gonna be able to use it then uh, we'll just move on to the next section you know and having anytime you put windows in a house or doors in a house the hole is always bigger than the window slightly because you've got to make room for putting the window in and then shimming or putting the door in and then shimming making it level in that hole and then you put your window stops or your door trim uh, so there's always going to be some gap uh, you want it to be as minimal as possible and then you want to be able to fill it with on, on this case in a dial like some stucco material or something like that and some trim on the outside same process uh, so you don't want the hole too tight but you don't want it too gaping huge either so anyway what's what once I'm satisfied with that, we'll just take the old aluminum foil ball and uh, lightly add texture throughout these uh, two wall panels. One thing that sometimes I can get carried away with is too deep a texture and too big a texture. And then you get this comic book looking kind of texture that doesn't scale with the figure and, and I didn't want that here so I went really light and um, I, I didn't push very hard and so rotating the royal <laughs> rotating the foil ball uh, on its end and in different angles to create different lines and varying you know bits of texture that cross over each other and stuff so uh, that's kind of what we're doing here and this table is stinking shaky I need another table <laughs> so we'll go back through uh, after we do that and I'll just get to picking and uh, taking some of the faces of these bricks off and exposing a little bit of what's below the brick face which would just be a mortar uh, or concrete of some kind and we'll paint that in there later on but you know this is uh, I, I really wanted to in this build 
try some new stuff. And the shape of this dio is one that's new for me too, along with the use of magnets. Uh, and so I already starting off with this build have done a couple different things. The two wall and 14 high uh, style that I'm doing here, a 14 inch high wall really is only a 13 inch high wall in the dial because the wall goes below the dial by the thickness of the foam, which is one inch. And so uh, the way I came up with this measurement is I just took my 100 millimeter macro lens and I composed a shot on some blank foam using the 100 millimeter lens and seeing if I could uh, get a composition that I was happy with, including all the dial uh, in the shot with that lens choice. And if I could, then the measurements were fine because then I could use that for a 35 mil, then I could use it for a 50 mil or wh whatever other lens I wanted at a 200 mil. So anyway, that's how I came up with the measurements and um, they worked out pretty good. So we're just going through here now. What I did is I'm trying to make these little puzzle pieces and I took a marker and I cut out uh, or I traced some parts of the brick uh, in like a puzzle fashion and now I'm cutting them out and the purpose of this is I'm going to recess those uh, bits of the dial wall uh, back into the dial wall a little bit to give there the idea of some depth. And it's the same technique you do if you're building like a roll-up door or something like that, or even just a, a non-opening door out of foam. You cut the shape out, then you push it back into the foam a little bit, and now you've got a doorway and frame. It's the same kind of technique here, except that I'm just doing it to recess some bricks to make it look like there's just a little bit more depth in there. This proved to be a little bit more tricky <laughs> than I anticipated. It's, it wasn't hard, but it just uh, it took more time uh, to do. And I'm, I'm happy with the result, but it, it did take a little bit of cutting and going around each one, uh, each line multiple times. And you'll see the end result here shortly. And there's my faithful Popeye, man. He just, he's the one I go to when I want to measure something, when I want to see how tall a doorway needs to be or a window. I can't use him for, for scaling like things that go in a hand because his hands are enormously large, <laughs> but for height and, and everything else, he works great. And I tried to take a uh, and, and wash his clothing because he's gathered dust and and grime over time and he needs to be cleaned up a bit but his shirt doesn't come off and uh, I'll just leave all that grime on there it just adds to his character I guess but <laughs> you know you can see me pushing this blade through here man I'm trying to get this thing loosened up oh Sometimes you wonder why you started to do something, <laughs> but the end result is nice. You know, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Look at that. <laughs> you know, in my mind, this was going to be uh, a pretty cool idea and it worked out to be, but these X-Acto knives, just the blade isn't that long, man. and. You know, they should make they should make a blade that's like two inches long or something. And maybe they do. I'm just late to the game. I don't know. But it would really help. And if you tried this with a foam burning tool or melting tool, it would just it would ruin it. So the only real way uh, here is like an exacto blade, but they're just not that dang long. If anybody knows of another tool, certainly leave it in the comments below. Once you get this out and you want to clean it up, these sanding twigs though are super helpful. I come across sanding twigs in some random hobby magazine that was sent to me. I didn't buy them from the hobby magazine because they were just way overpriced. So I bought them on Amazon. I think like most people do. <laughs> uh, and sanding twig is a fancy name for emery boards that we cut into sixteenths. <laughs> That's all this is. 
but they work great uh, for, and they come in different grits. Um, the grits aren't labeled. You just got to kind of get your colors out and make you a sort of a note on which ones, you know, go, uh, you know, coarse to fine. But they work great for getting in tight little spots and areas for cleaning 3D prints and, you know, working with like styrene and foam here and stuff like that, just because they're really flexible and they're really skinny. And so you can really do some good cleaning with them. Now, had I have thought about this, uh, I would have taken that piece of foam that I cut out, put it on the Proxon and cut probably a quarter of an inch to a half inch off of that. Uh, because as it stands now, I mean, the, the effect is nice and, and, it, and it works great. But when you push the foam in there to recess it, it pokes out the back wall a little bit. And to me, it doesn't make it look as clean. So if I would have taken uh, and shaved, you know, a half inch to a quarter inch off the, the thickness of that uh, foam, then it wouldn't push out the back and look like, uh, you know, it, it would be a cleaner looking uh, effect on the back side of the wall. You don't see the back side of the wall on the dial, but, you know, when this ultimately gets painted on the back uh, and sealed up and my sticker goes on it, you wouldn't have a piece of foam, you know, protruding out the back. So anyway, let's talk about this really cool effect with hairspray. This is hairspray I'm spraying on to this uh, painted, uh, spray painted 3d printed door uh, you can use any kind of spray pay uh, spray paint and there are chipping mediums that you can buy i don't know about them i have never bought one uh, i figured i would try this with hairspray and the trick with doing this with the hairspray is light misting coats far away don't pack it on at a close range because uh, you're not going to get the effect you want. You want to just light mists from a distance. And once you spray the hairspray on and it dries, don't rush it, let it dry. Then you're going to, you know, turn on, then, then you're going to go to your paint booth. You're not going to turn on the vent and you're going to spray paint it white. <laughs> no, you're going to be in a well ventilated area and you're going to uh, put your paint on there, whether it's with an airbrush or, uh, you know, acrylic paint brushes or whatever. You're going to apply your next coat over the top of the hairspray. And that way the paint is sticking to a surface that is dissolvable with, with water. So when you go to brush uh, or dab or stipple water over the top of this paint, it's going to remove the white, exposing the base layer of the Rust-Oleum brown color that I have underneath. It's the logic behind this at any rate. And we're gonna try it for the first time. And uh, I, do have to say, spoiler alert, I liked the way that this came out. Really cool technique. I didn't have to buy uh, chipping mediums and other stuff. I really don't always like to buy a specialized product if I don't have to. Uh, if I can get a cool effect out of this, uh, you know, and not have to spend 25 bucks on something in a jar, then man, I'm, I'm gonna go with the DIY method uh, if I think that it gives me the result that I want. And, and I, I, would, I would think other people are, you know, are the same way. Uh, we don't always wanna break bread for some product in a jar if we don't have to. Uh, not to say that some of them aren't really great and do a really fine job, and I do have some of them. <laughs> but in this case, I wanted to try the hairspray because, well, we have hairspray. And, uh, you know, it just seemed like something that uh, would be kind of cool and fun to try out for the first time. And I did, and and, uh, and I really enjoyed it. So at any rate, if you're going to spray the hairspray and if you're going to airbrush, make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. And um, if you're doing a paint booth, uh, make sure to turn that exhaust fan on. <laughs> Let me show you how this works. Now, first, you have to be really careful here. Remember that the hairspray and the acrylic paints dissolve uh, or wash away in water. And I'm putting water right on the top of this with a sponge. So I'm stippling on a gray wash here. And man, I'm going to tell you, do not, <laughs> do not uh, make more motion than you need to when you do this. Stipple that on. And, you know, 
I'm trying to get those runs back up. I don't want those runs. I just want this uh, gray wash on here to create some staining. And what I say by don't move too much is if you, if you move that sponge around on there, it's going to dissolve that hairspray underneath and you're going to get not chipping, but you're going to get large patches of white paint that disappear. So keep the motion really light and really minimal. Uh, and, and I'm using different poured sponges here to create different effect and, and build up my layers in this gray wash. Uh, and I'll use darker and lighter grays uh, to get this done. And this is just a gray, uh, pewter gray, the famous Walmart apple barrel pewter gray. <laughs> and now I'm going to add, I uh, think I'm going to add a little black in here and darken this up and just start to build up some of the, you can see on the door how the water, uh, the, the gray wash dries in these different patterns. Uh, I'm going to go back over that now with a little bit darker wash and just start to build up around the edges, creating some really cool uh, layered bits of staining and patterns that you might see in a weathered exterior metal door. Uh, but man, really be careful doing this and dab. Don't smear because you will take that paint right away. I will say too though, if you don't like this effect or if you've made a mistake and you want to put and you put too much water on there and it took more of a area of paint away than you want, man, put it under the sink, wash that whole layer off. It'll come off like in 30 seconds, man. Uh, and you'll just spray another layer of hairspray on there and put your top coat back on it. it I know because I did it. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really an easy effect to do, but it's really an easy effect with the hairspray to mess up. So experiment with it a little bit. And one of the advantages of the chipping medium is it's more controllable. And uh, so there is a trade-off, but here, you know, like I said, I washed it off and just did it again. But look how awesome the darker grays are building on top of the lighter grays on top of the lighter door. Man, stippling and washes are just such a fantastic way to instantly create, uh, I don't know instantly, because you got to build them up, but quickly create lots of years of age and, uh, you know, effect like this. It's just really cool. So let me quickly backtrack. <laughs> let me show you how the chipping works. Uh, you take a, th you know, stiff bristle brush, you trim the ends off to make it a little stiffer and shorter. The reason I'm backtracking is because uh, I started to do the chipping here and I wasn't thinking I need to add the washes and the stippling first and then do the chipping. So by the time I realized that, uh, I went ahead and started doing the stipple washes on top, but my camera didn't record later the chipping process. So at least I had this chipping <laughs> uh, in, in, you know, recorded. So what you do is you just dip your you know, real stiff uh, brush in water and you just touch with a little bit of friction, a twisting or a little scuffing type of hand motions like you see me doing here with uh, this brush and just plain water. Uh, don't get carried away. Don't brush and drag it across the door or whatever you're working on small little tiny movements because if the effect is too large it's not going to scale right and look right with the figure that you're doing keep it small and and keep it uh keep it small and keep it moving <laughs> remember this is just water you're just uh basically it's kind of the same effect that you get when you do it with latex except that this here doesn't have the uh i mean it's you're not using latex and and uh it, it's a, a slightly different effect um and this is just a really cool new thing to try that i wanted to give a give a whirl and share with you but i did it in the reverse order what you should do uh is 
start out with the washing like I did. Uh, and then you go back and you chip away after you get all your washes built up. Then you chip away at the hairspray uh, with the stiff brush and water. Um, if, if I did it first, then and I washed it afterward, what would happen is I would be washing on top of all the brown Rust-Oleum rust underneath too, and it would look ridiculous. So you wanna make sure that uh, you do all your washes on top of the uh, white. Then you chip away after that. So at least the camera recorded <laughs> this. Uh, sometimes that, I don't want to say the word because it's on voice activation, it'll turn on, but sometimes that small miniature camera with the word pro in it <laughs> acts weird. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so uh, at least it recorded this part of it, even though I'm showing it to you in the reverse order. Remember, just go ahead and apply your top coat of white there. Uh, then you do all your washes. Then you go ahead and do this part of it, which is the chipping, and you end up with this. <laughs> Sometimes I just don't know how I get anything done. <laughs> you know, uh, then we're gonna hit that with a Mod Podge once it's thoroughly dry. And the reason I hit it with the Mod Podge is because I wanna put, I'm gonna be brushing against it here, putting these pigments on. Uh, and remember, there's still a, a really delicate, uh, easily dissolvable hairspray layer on there. So to prevent that from washing away uh, or being, you know, scuffed away, I seal it with a finisher like a Mod Podge. Now, you don't have to use the aerosol. You can use uh, the brush-on kind. Uh, I imagine you can, but... Once again, you're going to be dragging a brush across that hairspray layer. So I would probably be really cautious doing that. And that's why I, I have both Mod Podges, uh, the aerosol and the brush on kind here. I think the aerosol kind probably would be a much safer choice. Uh, use that in a well ventilated area because it is strong, but I love it. So we're going to brush on these Vallejo pigments. And I'm going to tell you this too. In the spirit of DIY, chalk pastels, warm earth tone chalk pastels on Amazon. You can get all these same colors, uh, put them in a grinder, grind them up into a fine powder, and you can create the same type of rusting effects with the same colors. Heck, let me just show you <laughs> bonus footage, right? Let's make the video longer as if 30 minutes wasn't long enough to spend with me. <laughs> so take your chalk pastels like I did here and you just get these on Amazon, man. They're like 10, 12 bucks. Open them up and if my wife is watching this, she's gonna love me even more than she already does when I'm using the baby bullet to put it. <laughs> The chalk pastels in and grind them up <laughs> uh, but uh, at the end of the day no we don't use this for a baby so uh, it's just called baby bullet but uh, you grind these powders up man and you've got a whole different array of pigments to brush on to stuff so that being said back to the door uh, if you can save money save it if it gives you the opportunity to achieve a similar or, you know, result that you're happy with. Save the money, okay? I love Vallejo pigments. I think they're great. Uh, sometimes they're out of stock and back ordered when you're trying to get certain colors. And uh, so I found this uh, method on YouTube of just grinding up the chalk pastels. So, hey, give it a shot, man. Uh, try something new, try something different. And who knows what I'm chewing on here? Don't know, but let's paint some rust onto a hairspray chipped Mod Podge coated door. <laughs> and this is all really entirely up to you. You 
you know, put this stuff on where you think the, the darker colors would accumulate and time and moisture and gravity would pull water downward, creating lighter, newer colored shades of rust. And you just build these layers up in a way that's pleasing to you. I don't know that I'm doing it the most realistic way. Uh, it's hard to mimic, you know, what occurs naturally. Uh, and I think I've got it down pretty well on this. I start with the darks and then I sort of fade out to the lighter, newer, brighter, orangish colors of rust. I hit the door handle here. The, there's a little lock that I modeled a keyhole that I modeled onto this door and uh, I'm hitting just underneath that and what the liquid is in the cap is the Vallejo airbrush thinner uh, and that just kind of gives me the ability to take the pigment and smear it down a little bit and you know thin it out and wash it and move it around a little bit into different kind of shapes and different places. Um, I don't know a substitute for that. I tried it one time with water and it didn't give me the effect I wanted. So there is something in that airbrush thinner that, that works really great with those pigments and it sets them right in so that uh, you know they don't just all brush off of the uh, door <laughs> and fly into the wind. Um, there is something in that that helps them move around and set into place that uh, is real nice. I don't know what it is. I suppose if I read the bottle, maybe it'll say on there what it is, but I'm no chemist, so just buy that bottle. <laughs> uh, you know, somebody out here may know something that, that uh, some alternate product for that I'm not sure but as it stands now it's just called Vallejo airbrush thinner and that's what I use so I forget all the time to say please like and subscribe I get so caught up in doing the video and crafting and making the fun stuff I forget to subscribe you know it's a th easy thing to do just push the like button or the subscribe button or push them both <laughs> and even if you never see me again uh, at least you helped me out with something that didn't cost you any money. So uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the painting of these brick walls. And I'm just taking a really light uh, pewter gray apple barrel cheap paint from Walmart. And I'm brushing the entire wall, getting into all the brick line and getting it down in there. I'm not gobbing it on so it fills the brick line. Uh, don't, don't, don't run it in there and leave, you know, copious amounts of paint filling in all the detail. Uh, so, and if you've watched any of my other videos on how to make brick walls and stuff like that, I'll try to remember to link it in this uh, banner in the top of the screen right now so that you can see one of those. But um, the, I used a wood burning tool to create the brick line. So uh, once we get, and I chose gray to go down here because I'm gonna do some uh, reds on top mixed with some browns and it's just gonna give me a nice base coat. Uh, you know, you don't always need to use black Mod Podge to um, paint over the top of for your brick. Uh, it just depends on the effect that you're after. Black Mod Podge is, is great, but here I'm not looking for a bunch of aged dark holes on the wall. Um, you, you can get the same uh, awesome looking brick um, without always having to use Black Mod Podge. I use Black Mod Podge all, all, quite often, but in this case, it wasn't necessary. I'm still sealing the foam uh, and I'm getting a nice neutral color. If, if I went over this with Black Mod Podge and then I tried to go over it with red paint, uh, it would really change the color of the red paint and I would have to really build it up. So anyway, uh, you know, you, you don't always have to run to Black Mod Podge and I know a lot of people ask me, you know, well, what about Black Mod Podge? Yeah, it's there and you can use it, but it doesn't have to go on every single brick wall. Uh, so in this case, you can see I'm going to make some really cool brick walls <laughs> and I don't even touch the Black Mod Podge. 
<laughs> anyway, we're going to mix up a little bit of red. These are just apple barrel paints. Uh, who needs a lid? Let's just take that thing right off and pour it in, man. These are only $2 a bottle, right? <laughs> and then there's that elasticy, clumpy piece. Good thing I took the lid off and poured it in, right? I wouldn't have. My, my hole would have been all clogged up with that piece of gunk. Got it out, threw it away. Let's mix up some burnt umber, I think that is. Love that color. Uh, I need to take better care of my pink caps. Look at those filthy things. What's the matter with me? <laughs> I'm just mixing up a red, brick red kind of here that I think I like. It's going to work nicely. And once that gray dries, see those dial panels are They're dried. They're quick. Um, and you can still see all the detail. You can still see all the grout line. Everything is visible there. Uh, we're gonna mix up this uh, brick red that I like. And once I've got it mixed up, we're gonna brush with the brush at an angle. Uh, we're not gonna really press hard, but we're not gonna really press light enough like it's a dry brush either. We wanna cover this panel in red. And if it gets down in the grout lines, that's just fine because we're gonna put grout in those grout lines in the next step. So it's okay, just go ahead and paint this on. And don't be fooled because sometimes you think, oh gosh, this just, this isn't the color I thought it was gonna be. It looks so much brighter and now it looks like crap. This is gonna dry and it will tone down and lose its glossy look and it will be fine, just press on and go. Sometimes during the project, we think, man, you know, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Uh, but, you know, just keep going and, and it'll work out. <laughs> so anyway, uh, once we've got all that on there, I'm going to go through and brush some dark, uh, darker brown on individual random bricks. Um, I would have done some oranges, but as it stands, I don't have an orange uh, in my color collection that I was happy with. So I went to Walmart and bought some more, <laughs> but that was later. So we're going to go through and brush some individual bricks just to break them up a little bit with a brown. Uh, then we're going to stipple on some wash on top of this. Uh, and you can do this two ways. Once you put that gray base on there like I did. You could have stippled some darker areas on there with a sponge and then painted the red over the top of that. Or you can do it after. Here in this case, I did it after because uh, I just thought it would look better. Um, each of them is a little bit different. Uh, end result each each way if you if you stipple it on before and then paint over it's a little more muted uh, and so the paint has to be a little bit stronger when you do it that way if you do it afterward the paint has to be much more watered down uh, and uh, to get the darker areas of you know age looking break so at any rate be careful with that uh, we got a little yellow and mixed with a little brown and we just hit random bricks in groups of threes <laughs> something about groups of threes <laughs> let's put some grout line in this and then um this is just an acrylic medium modeling paste and i'll mix it with a colored grout that i want which in this case is just going to be pewter gray uh, which is what i normally go for we'll mix that in there until i get a a color that I like and if it's dark then just add a little more modeling paste if it's too light add a little more paint whatever you think is gonna work uh, for your grout line it's gonna match the effect you're after and people do use the uh, sheetrock mud and stuff for this but I find this just works better for me go ahead and get your little like a credit card or debit card or squeegee push all that down in there and I should add make sure your paint is thoroughly dry and that you have uh, put a Mod Podge sealer on there whether it's a brush on or an aerosol if you do an aerosol uh, give it a little bit of distance even though this is coated with paint and the propellant's not going to eat the foam give it a little bit of distance in there anyway uh, so get your damp cloth once all your modeling paste is pushed down into the grout line get your damp microfiber cloth 
and don't press hard just wipe all this off and you're going to be left with a really nice grout line if you haven't done so like and subscribe to the video uh like and subscribe to the channel <laughs> like the video <laughs> uh give me a follow on tiktok facebook uh youtube instagram all the social media platforms for those who are watching i will put a link right up here in the screen to the free STL file for the window in here. Take care, folks.